Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today for episode 5 of 5 in our series on sharks. Happy Shark Week. Sorry, we're wrapping it up. But this episode, I mean, so far we've talked about the evolution of sharks and where they came from and some really awesome stuff. I'm sure you've enjoyed it. If you haven't watched those, please go back and do that. And also, if you don't subscribe, do that too. We'd love to have you join our community. But today we're going to do something a little bit different. We sent out a, a tweet earlier in the week to get some questions about sharks so that we made sure that we weren't just talking about the same thing that people tend to talk about every shark week. So we used the hashtag DNews Plus, we tweeted it at DNews or they tweeted it at me, at Trace Dominguez. And so this episode, I'm gonna be answering your questions. So make sure you stick around, let's kick into it. So first comes from Rochelle or Rachel R underscore on Twitter and she wants to know, why can't we keep great whites in captivity? Love your question. I love where your head's at. There's been a long history of trying to do this and trying to display great whites at aquariums around the world. It's actually a really difficult thing. There's been very little success with it. In 2005, the Monterey Bay Aquarium set a record of keeping a great white in captivity at their aquarium for six and a half months. And then they had to release it back into the wild. But to keep it for six and a half months took a huge amount of planning, more than three years of work, a three million gallon holding tank, and it took all of this time and effort just to be able to get the shark for six and a half months. When a shark was accidentally caught in a fisherman's net, the scientists were there in 45 minutes. They were able to get the shark into the tank, they let it adjust for 25 days, then they transported it via semi-truck from Southern California to Northern California to get it into this three million gallon holding tank. It's crazy, but again, it didn't work very well. Uh, Monterey Bay had tried this before in 1985, and there it only survived for 10 days, and it wouldn't eat. In 1981, a Sea World set a record holding a great white for 16 days before releasing it back into the wild, and other places have tried to hold great white sharks, but they usually just die within a few days or even within a few hours. Most recently in Japan, where a great white died in captivity after just three days. It's not easy. But obviously aquariums want to try because who wouldn't want to see a great white shark up close? I mean, I would, and I'm sure you would too, without, of course, the worry of death. That's kind of a big deal. But it doesn't work. Why? Well, first off, they think it's because they are migratory animals. They swim very long distances to hunt and feed, and sharks are very social. Great white sharks have hierarchies, they have all sorts of interactions, and Actually, a lot of research shows that there are reasons for the long distances for great white migration, although we don't know how and why they do that. But they literally swim across whole oceans and back again in a matter of months, just being kept in a tank, even a three million gallon tank, is extremely restricting. It'd be like if you were used to driving all over the country and now you couldn't leave your bedroom. It'd be really, really stressful. So. One of the only things they can do is refuse to eat. They might also bump into the tank walls just because they're not used to being captive. Another reason is that these are predators, apex predators, actually. They like to feed on live prey. They are hunters, right? So if we're holding this in an aquarium, uh, they don't scavenge for food. They don't like being fed by humans. So aquariums would have to provide living animals so that those sharks could hunt and eat. Just picture that. I mean, this is not unlike people with pet snakes feeding rats and mice to their snakes, right? Except we're doing this on a giant scale because it's a great white shark. So they'd have to go out, find a large marine mammal, bring it to their aquarium where they built a tank big enough for a shark that normally swims through oceans and then have it hunt that animal to get it to eat. That's crazy. Chances are you would buy a ticket for it, but the shark would not participate. I could pretty much guarantee. One thing they notice with great white sharks in captivity is that they actually bump into the glass a lot, which can injure the shark. Some scientists think this is due to a problem with their electroreception when they're in the tanks. We've talked about that superpower before. Go back and check out that earlier bit. Some think that there's a problem with the water because it throws their electrosensitivity off, making them confused about where they are. Maybe the water isn't mixed properly, it's not the best seawater, it's not the right kind of seawater for them. And all of these can be factors in why great whites haven't been held in captivity for very long. But as far as we know, it's hard to tell exactly why without a lot of data, and it's very difficult to capture and get them into a tank to test that, and then they die, so we don't feel great about it. If we have to keep killing great whites in tanks to find out how to keep a great white in a tank, 
I don't really feel awesome about that. Maybe you do, but I don't think a lot of scientists who love these animals would. Great question, though. Thank you, Rochelle or Rachel R. Next comes from Blackrock Pearl on Twitter, and that is, what does a shark diet consist of? Well, it's a big answer, because it's a lot of stuff. Many sharks are not that picky when it comes to food. They eat marine animals. They eat things like stingrays, crustaceans, sea turtles, squid, octopus, fish, even, of course, seals and sea lions and seabirds. But sometimes they're going to eat pretty much whatever they can get their little jaws on, you know? Bullets, car parts, 24 pork steaks wrapped in paper, gasoline canisters. And those are things that have actually been found in sharks, by the way. Not all of the sharks that exist in the world are the same, so they don't all have razor sharp teeth ready to rip flesh off their prey, you know? Whale sharks are filter feeders. So they swim similar to a whale and they filter plankton and tiny plants and animals out of the water and that's their sustenance. So again, we're not part of the menu. Humans, we, we, don't, we don't fit into their calculation on food, but they eat a lot of stuff. Doru Pero asks one of our favorite questions, where did the name shark come from? Where'd the word shark? There's not actually a lot of clear information on this. Uh, dictionaries usually just list it as unknown origin, which means it's probably so old that we didn't know where it came from. But I did read a paper from Pre-Columbian Art Research Institute written by Pre-Columbian Institute because something has its origins based in the Mayan word zak, pronounced like shock. Spelled Zoc, though, X-O-C. And it may have been picked up by English sailors. So it also could come from a Saxon word, which I have no idea how to pronounce. It's spelled S-C-E-A-R-A-N. So Caesarian, Sicarian, Sicaran, I'm not sure. Uh, I would look up a pronunciation, but that doesn't seem to be a thing that you can really do using the internet somehow. But it means cutting into pieces or cut into pieces. Oxford Dictionary from 1828, they say that it comes from a Greek word, kacharius, meaning sharp tooth. Others say it may come from the German word schurk, which is a cheat. A 1914 dictionary settled on obscure origin. <laughs> so honestly, we don't really know, which is awesome. BP the Ghost asked, how did the hammerhead evolve? So first off, hammerhead shark's head, it's called a cephafoil. And I'm guessing you want to know how that specific part of the shark evolved. And most experts agree that it's increased eyesight. Uh, over time, the hammerhead evolved to have this kind of 360 degree view on the vertical plane, meaning that it can see above and below, as well as, you know, around. With just a small movement of their head, they can even see behind them, which is awesome for the shark, great for being a predator. Other benefits included increased maneuverability through the water because of the fin-like shape of their head. It increased electrosensors on their face to help locate prey better. And it also has a better sense of smell than some other sharks. But specifically, hammerheads evolved from larger sharks. And all of these things give them an advantage. And over hundreds of millions of years, they evolved to just need the little eye stalks, just the cephafoils, which is really, really cool. Rob Roy commented on one of our videos uh, asking about sharks being immune from disease. And this may have come from the rumor that sharks don't get cancer and in fact can help cure cancer in humans, uh, specifically the cartilage inside of a shark. And this has led people to try and market pills made of shark, which devastates shark populations. And that is terrible. And they have been proven to not cure cancer. This is a myth, this is a rumor. Multiple FDA trials found no positive effects of taking shark cartilage pills in affecting your cancers. Sharks also get cancer. 2004 study out of the University of Hawaii identified 42 tumors in numerous sharks. Some were found even inside of that magic cartilage. And that really, really disproves that cancer thing. But finally, Daniel Puzzy asks, if sharks eat at McDonald's, and look, Daniel, I know you might have been joking, but we don't joke on this show. This is about science. Okay, we joke. We joke a little bit. We were talking about super sharks earlier. But anyway, one time a six-foot bull shark actually swam up to a McDonald's, Daniel, during a flood in Australia. But it hasn't been proven that it actually ate any of the McDonald's there. But no one really can say for sure because, you know, maybe it floated away. So if it did or it didn't, maybe a shark at an Australian McDonald's ate there one time. Bet you didn't think we'd answer that one, but this is our job. 
Thanks, guys, for tuning in to this Shark Week edition of DNews Plus. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all of you that sent me questions so that we could go look that up. And really, though, Daniel, I'm going to answer whatever question you tweet. That's, how, that's just how it's going to be. I mean, maybe not forever. There's going to be a limit, but it's going to happen. We'd love to do it some more. Let us know what you think about this down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get more DNews Plus. And thanks for tuning in. I'm Trace. We'll see you next week.